everybody feel good. Got my suitcase packed, ready to go. Got my suitcase packed, ready to go. Gotta leave this city, can't take it no more. What is your reason for coming to Serbia for the beginning? Uh, the reason is that we got an invitation to come and play in this beautiful uh, virtue tank. For the for the blues festival, and uh, it's a great reason. So we're cl glad to be here, and we're playing tomorrow night. Can you start from your music beginning uh, with uh, gospel, then blues? How everything started? Well, it was about a hundred years ago, <laughs> down a little place called Vicksburg, Mississippi. Uh, started out in the church, you know, about seven, eight years old, singing in the choir and stuff like that. And then uh, when I had an opportunity, um, after I got to be 17, 18 years old, I'd slip away to the juke joints and stuff and listen to the, what we perceive as secular music and devil's music, you know. But it all started out in the church with my family, you know. It's your first time here in Novi Sad? No, this is actually my third time here. Yeah. 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 What do you think about our town? I like your town. I like your town. I really do. I, I like the people here and I like the feeling that you have here. Tell us something about your music beginnings, where everything started, your blues. Wow. I guess maybe where it all started was when we got to St. Louis. And I heard it. It was all over St. Louis. I, uh, they had two radio stations, AM. They were playing what we called R&B. But it would be like Jimmy Reed, Albert King, B.B. King, Lightning Hopkins. Rhythm and That's what we called it. But it was really like blues, you know. Well, I played the guitar, the acoustic guitar, and I was listening to the radio, Radio Luxembourg. And I heard Big Bill Brunty. And that, was, that started me because it was really fantastic uh, guitar playing and great emotional uh, singing and I was sold on the spot so that's what started me in this kind of music and I wanted to to find more about it and, and learn it and so I followed that, that, that road. And how you decided to move to blues from gospel? I, I, that's a big question I, you know I, I, don't, I don't really have an answer for it it's just it's, it was just a, a transition, you know, it's just, uh, but I still do gospel, even today. I mean, I do just uh, a variety of, of different, different genres of music, you know. Uh, so I don't, I don't particularly specialize in one, one genre, you know. A friend of mine named Steve, Steve Waldman, took me to hear, I was probably a guy like Eugene Neal, a, a good St. Saint, Saint Louis blues musician, and uh, either him or... Benny Sharp, if Steve was here, he would say, well, I know exactly who it was, but McLeod ain't going to remember. But I heard that, and I heard blues, and I think that's where it started with me. I, I, I felt a kindred spirit to it. And I certainly don't speak Serbian. Mm -hmm. Oh, you would hate me for it. You would hate me for it. I remember when I was a young guy. I used to love to go hear this old man. He would sit on his porch and he would tell these stories. You have very interesting stories before your songs. Uh, what are the most popular and what uh, you like the most to tell to audience? Something about the love relationships or something else? <laughs> well, it depends on the song, Dragon. I mean, uh, there's old blues man I learned from when I was 20 years old. He, his name was Ernest Banks. He told me this. He said, Never write or sing about what you don't know about, and never play a note you don't believe. So my songs are from my life experiences, right? And uh, there's an honesty to that. So my stories, uh, 
the story is really ain't going to change in front of the song, right? Because that's the story that inspired the song. This isn't your first time here, right? I've been to Serbia quite a few times. I've played in Belgrade, in Nice, lots of places. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I love to be here. My, wife, my wife's family comes from Kosovo, so I have some, some, uh, some family here too. They live mainly in uh, Belgrade and, and Nice. What was the main reason for you to come for the first time and what were your first impressions then? I heard that there was a lot of beautiful ladies here. Yeah. <laughs> And 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 come to find that that's a reality. It's that's real. A lot of beautiful, nice. No, I'm 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 just kidding a little bit now. But uh, to be serious, uh, the 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 people here are very very warm and hospitable, very kind, and tre and treated me really really warm, and accepted me. Well, openly, you know, so, so, and they appreciated the music that I that I brought up here, and so, it's it's a, it's a nice place to to come and play and and enjoy the people, you know. This is your third time here in Serbia. Yeah. Can you compare audience here and in other countries? What well, is different? You know, people say that there should be a difference. I really don't see it. No, no um, I think when I was younger, I did. Uh, but when I got older, I realized that uh, if you try to be honest and you're coming from your heart, it really doesn't matter who you're playing for, because we're all the same down deep inside, you know. So I like to think that uh, all audiences are good, and I don't mean to sound like a politician. <laughs> I just I have to believe that now. So the next yeah. time you're on the highway. What's your first impression about Serbia and what is your opinion about Serbia because you know a lot about uh, our people, I guess? Well, I like, I like Serbia a lot and I like the people. They're very warm and they're very sort of uh, hosp hospitable and it's, uh, it's a great country to be in and uh, the food is fantastic. I like the, the, the luto paprika, you know, I like that kind of stuff. So it's, it's a very nice, nice country. Do you know other words uh, in Serbian language? Kako <laughs> da Did your wife uh, learn you that? I, I learned it when I visited the, the family. So, so I picked up quite a few words and I, I, I understand. Rasumim ali nije govore. You heard the, for Anna Popovic and maybe for some other musicians from Serbia. What do you think about them? Huh? Oh, Is that wonderful. good blues? Huh? Wonderful. I, I think it's so great that uh, musicians from other countries have have gravitated to blues and taken it to a, a different place. You know what I mean? Uh, it's great to see. You know, the Austrian guys, there's Serbian guys, there's English guys, there's all over the world, you know, they're playing it, you know. Canadian guys, you know, it's good, good to see. What would you like to change here, maybe? You know a lot of, a lot of things about uh, our people, but uh, what would you like to change, maybe? Well, I, I know uh, like Serbia before the war and it was very sort of promising. People were optimistic and like the whole Balkan war uh, put the whole thing down like several steps. And it's really, uh, it's, it's hard to see, you know, how lots of things went worse than they were. And I hope that, that people can, can build up again and, you know, get get the country and and the people going again because it's a wonderful country great people and uh, I hope that Serbia will will come up again you spent some time here you know sad and uh, what uh, what what you think about uh, living every day here in Novi Sad, about uh, our drinks our food our day life something like that do you have enough experience about that I love your tomatoes I think they're the best tomatoes in the world. I, I had them for breakfast, you know. 
And I said, wow, that's good. And every time I've had dinner where you have your tomatoes, they're the best. They're the best I ever tasted. So I know that don't sound like a great thing to say, but I fell in love with your tomatoes, man. You know? <laughs> what do you think about the uh, Blues Festival? It's smaller and bigger. And uh, what you like, where you like to play the most? Doesn't matter. You know, uh, if I can have a beautiful time, it doesn't matter if it's two people or if it's 2,000 or 20,000. Uh, if I can have a good time, uh, then, then it doesn't matter. Uh, I, naturally, we would want to say, well, we would prefer a big festival because it's more, more money, you know. But at the same time, I've worked so many jobs where areas that was not money, but I have, I have uh, such a strong uh, uh, respect for the music and love for the music. That's a part of the reward, you know, is that, is that I enjoy it, you know, so much. Yeah. Why don't you let me be? Your type of uh, playing guitar is very special. How did you learn that? Did you have a teacher or...? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, like that old man, Ernest Banks, when I went to see him, his right hand, I mean, it's all about the right hand with acoustic guys, right? So I'd never seen a right hand like that. I was only 20 years old. And he never showed me anything, you know, his idea was, if I got it, I was supposed to. If I didn't, the hell with me. He didn't care, you know. But I noticed that the right hand was what makes each acoustic guy different. Think about it. The right hand, if you listen to Big Bill Brunzi, he doesn't sound like Blind Willie McTell, who don't sound like Blind Blake, who don't sound like Robert Johnson. You understand what I'm saying? Each guy's different. Because your left hand is your brain. You're a guitar player. You're going to know what I'm doing in my left hand if you know what tuning I'm in. Right? Right? But my right hand, that's the personality. So it's allowing that right hand to have that personality. I wish I knew. Yeah, I did a, I did a DVD, an instructional DVD. And the guy said, uh, would you write the tablature for it? I said, I have no idea what I'm doing in my right hand. <laughs> Why is the blues the special type of music for you? I think it's very emotional. It's, uh, it seems simple, but it isn't really simple. And it tells uh, life stories. And it's, uh, it's a universal kind of music that, that lots of people can relate to in all of different kind of places. And when the daylight out rolls You played with uh, Ray Kuder, uh, and he told that you are better frontman than him. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I, you know, it's just, it's just what he thinks. You know, it's like he uh, he did he doesn't label himself as a as a as a singer or vocalist. You know, whereas he's a he's a, a world famous guitar player, slide player. You know. And, and and my main thing is is vocals, you know. I, I'm not a guitar player, you know, but I could strum a few rhythm, you know, a few rhythm notes. But but my main thing is vocal. So so I, I I guess that's why he said, you know, you're better as a guy out singing in front of me, you know. I had a chance to meet uh, Ray Kuder also. Yeah, and the last record we did uh, called Delta Time, we invited a few of Terry's singing colleagues and we also invited Ray Kuda. And for me as a guitar player, this was a, a great opportunity because I've, I've been, I've been a, a big fan of Ray Kuda's forever, mm -hmm. you know, for a long time. And it was great to play with him in the, in the studio and work together. As far back as I can remember I either had to fly 
Today you play with Hans. Uh, is that your type of uh, mixing uh, European and American blues, something like that? Well, you'll see tonight. You know, it, uh, it was a very, uh, very interesting discovery. I mean, I met him years ago in Winnipeg, Canada. And he, we, we got acquainted, and he asked me to join him on some of his, some of his albums, and I did. And one thing led to another musically, and he said, "Well, why don't we try to, to uh, do some music together?" And we did, and it was, it was a new blossom. You know, it, it felt good, it felt interesting, and the both of us, we enjoyed it. So, you know. And we just we just kept kept moving forward, you know. What can you say about your experience uh, about uh, playing with Terry Evans? Uh, I met Terry in 1982 at the festival in Canada in Winnipeg, and I heard him sing, and I thought this is a great voice. So we connected. You know, we were jamming afterwards after the festival, and. Uh, we switched uh, phone numbers and I invited him to, to play on a record I was doing in 1992 and uh, and since then we've been we've been playing together but we've only been playing as a duo for the last eight nine years or so blues isn't popular so much in these days right. like maybe earlier right. uh, what is the reason because it is uh, the best music for me personally and for a lot of other people but it's not enough well, I'm glad to hear you say that I, I really don't know um, I uh, my my wonderment might be uh, Maybe the tradition, you know, we talked about taste in space, you know, but the old guys did. We might be losing some of that. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of pyrotechnics on, on the guitar and, you know, instruments where you don't breathe. Uh, maybe that affects blues. Uh, that would be my guess at it. I do think, though, when people hear blues in the sense that it's telling a story, whether it be the lyrics or be the instrumentals, it attracts people. Because I think it reaches inside the hearts of people. I really do. And I hope, you know, it's never going to die. It'll always be around. Uh, and it'll get a resurgence again. You know, it will. You know, I hope I'm around when it does. <laughs> I think it's always up and down. You know, blues has always been there. And uh, lots of other other kinds of music they pop up and then they disappear but blues is always there and it's sort of going like this and you know so once it pops up and then it goes down a little but it'll be there because I see so many great young uh, musicians and singers coming up so I, I'm sure that the blues will will be played for a long time to come what can you say about the blues scene today generally in America and in Europe it's gotten to be uh, a, a good situation now uh, with the help of a lot of the European uh, um, artists, you know, like um, Eric Clapton and people like that who, who've actually uh, uh, got involved in playing the blues after people like Muddy Waters and John Lee Hooker went to, to England and went to Europe and, and these guys were we're playing with along with these guys and so you know it that started that that blues revolution but before that it was just a, a lost form of art music you know with because you know it was everybody sort of looked down on it because it was a it was a black thing you know it was a black uh, black black music you know what you think what is the main uh, secret of delta blues why is delta blues so popular everywhere around the world I think the blues has a great uh, sense of feeling, you know, that people can really relate to many places, and and it also has like a musical sort of uh, 
uh, rhythm and and groove that that grabs people. And it's it's not a it's not a very difficult kind of music. It's not complicated. It's sort of simplicity, but with a lot of feeling and a lot of emotion. And I think lots of people can really relate to that all over the world. The first instrument you have when you were born is your voice, right? You sing. Everybody can sing. Whether you sing good or not is another thing, but everybody can sing. But you have to breathe, don't you, in order to sing. A saxophone player got to breathe. He just can't keep on playing notes. A piano player can keep on playing forever while he's breathing here. Guitar player can play all kinds of notes and doesn't have to breathe, does he? The great blues musicians, when you think about Albert King, B.B. King, Big Bill Brunsey, Tampa Red, the guys that began it, there's always space. And I think that's an important thing in this music. And I'm trying to impart that upon the young musicians, uh, that it's okay to use space and taste, you know what I mean, and dynamics. So it tells a story. The instrumental tells a story. What do you think about uh, new types of blues uh, with combination with uh, R&B, today's R&B, and hip-hop maybe, like King Tomorrow? Well, it's, it's just what people feel, you know, and, uh, uh, it, and that's a good thing because it's not one-dimensional, you know. If people can feel uh, certain, certain uh, uh, approaches to the music, that's a good thing. You know, there's a lot of people here in this world and a lot of people that, that like different things. So, so there's no limit or no cutoff point to what it's supposed to be, you know. It's just, it's a form of expression, that's all. They'll take your shirt off your back. How come people act like that? They take your phone and your crowd. They take everything you got. They talk behind your back. How come people act like that? They'll take your heart and your home And your blood from your bones They'll take your shirt off your back How come people act like that? Like that? How come what did you expect like from Serbia before you came for the first time here? I was ignorant. I really didn't know. Yeah. No. Um, funny thing, uh, since I started playing music, I've traveled the world, and uh, I now I don't have any preconceived notions anymore. I go to I go to the place, I, I meet the people, I eat the tomatoes, and I get a good idea of what's going on, you know. So, no, I didn't really I didn't I didn't know about Serbia. I do now, though. I think I have a good a, a decent understanding about Serbia now. What is your message to musicians from Serbia and uh, did you meet any of them? Well, I've been meeting uh, several musicians. I just listened to the boys here and, uh, and great playing, great singing too. So it's just, you know, keep playing and keep singing and do what you like doing and, and just push it. You mentioned uh, lyrics. Did you try to read any Serbian lyrics or to <laughs> say any Serbian word? <laughs> I know a few words. I know dobro, that means good, because I play a national guitar, right? So, yeah, I can play a dobro, so. Uh, what else, a bala, you know, thank you. Uh, but that's it, the rest of it pretty tough for me to get, you know. Uh, you uh, live uh, in uh, Austria today. And uh, what is the difference between living in Austria and Holland? Uh, how you made th that decision a long years ago? Well, actually, I left Holland in 1970. I went up to, uh, to Scandinavia, and I lived there for about 10 years. And then I was uh, touring in Austria, and I met my wife in Vienna. And uh, so love took me to Vienna, and I've been there since 1982. And it's, uh, it's a great place to live. I want to ask you, uh, a lot of musicians made the covers of your songs. What do you think about that? Oh, huh? oh, an honor. I mean, 
when Albert King did a song of mine, you know, I mean, well, I used to see him, you know, Albert Collins, and then uh, Eva Cassidy, you know, uh, Sun Sun Seals, Bobby John Greach. Uh, what an honor, you know. You're driving. In those days, it was terrestrial radio, right? You're driving in your car, and there's your song, and it's Albert Collins doing it. You know, you go, wow. Yeah, a great feeling. Yeah. What are your plans for the future, and will you come back to Novi Sad? You're now. <laughs> I would love to think that I can come back and visit. You know, uh, um, I don't know how long I'm going to last physically. You know, because I uh, I have physical impairments now because I have a strong case of arthritis and I don't get around too too rapid. You know, but. Uh, as long as I can come and sit and, and entertain the people, that's what I would would love to do, you know. Uh, but there plans, and we'll be, we'll be see you again here in Serbia. Well, there's no any plans for, for the next uh, concert in Serbia, but I just talked, we drove from Vienna to uh, Novi Sad today, and in the car, Terry and me talked about doing another record, so that, that will be the next project, I think, you know. Thank you very much for a beautiful conversation. I wish you a good gig and see you later in Serbia again. I look Next forward year, to it, Dragon. All the best to you, man. All the best to you, too. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah.